Okay, we got Alex and we got our mystery wizard. So I'm going to let you guys chat it up. Mystery wizard is a longtime fan. Actually, his second time here on WZRD to talk to you. So we're all pretty excited, and I'll let him go ahead and take over with some questions he has. Alex Skater, it's been about 11 months since you and I spoke on WZRD last. How's it been? It's been great, man. Another uh, another almost year in the books of mayhem <laughs> and goodness. But uh, yeah, thank you for having me, Mr. Of course, man. It's it's great to have you back. I mean, you guys are coming to town this Saturday, March 7th at the Riviera with Goose. And uh, you're currently down in Colorado playing two nights before break to head up here to the Midwest, right? Yeah, we sure are. Uh, we're over in uh, Frisco right now. Great, great ski town. Uh, just a really gorgeous town. Uh, right on the main street. Uh, we're going to be playing two nights that just, uh, they both sold out and both razors. And Colorado's been great to us. So. Oh, they... They always are, yeah. I mean, well, well, what do you do on the road besides skiing with your time off? You got a couple days cup, uh, around the corner that you don't have shows coming up. What do you do with that spare time? Yeah, you know, we've, uh, we always make use of our uh, spare time. You know, we got some skiers in the group, and uh, even the guys that don't really, you know, ski, they'll still, uh, we'll still go, always go exploring, you know, check out a bunch of restaurants, and uh, just kind of, like, let the sights, you know, see the sights. We, uh, there's no point in touring if you're just going to kind of spend your downtime just in the oh. bus, not, not exploring. So. Right, that's half the fun is seeing the nation. Yeah, well, we're excited to have the flock back to the Midwest again. Um, I know you're bringing your feathered friends Goose along for the flight as well. Um, Goose I first heard of and was introduced via Domefest lineups years ago, which Domefest is Pigeon's um, 11th annual festival that happens in May. But Gator, what's it like now for pigeons to be able to help bands like Goose as much with getting as much exposure as possible, um, and being able to take them under your wing as being longtime friends with the band? For sure, yeah, no, that's a great question because it's, uh, it's it's something we take a lot of importance in is kind of uh, you know helping out fellow you know bands, up and coming bands that we believe you know have it, and you know we we were helped you know by a lot of bands exactly. Like, you know, was given, uh, you know, opening spots, taking chances on us at a festival spot. Um, and, you know, we like to get that back. If we hear an upcoming band, you know, there's no uh, there's no sense in of, uh, a straight, you know, competitive nature of, uh, you know, it's more so let's, let's help push these guys even further and it'll in turn help us push further. And it's just kind of a given, you know, it all comes back and, you know, it's, it's a great community uh, to be able to, like, you know, be able to reach out and other bands out and they help us out too they draw great crowds right it with uh, so it goes back and forth but, uh, they've been great man yeah and uh, as you said there's been uh some there's been times where you guys have had day slots where you filled in um especially for summer camp i know that um summer camp 2019 you guys got to fill in with mo for uh, a set that a couple bands couldn't show up on um how did that really come about I mean, that's another, uh, that's a kind of a good example there is, you know, summer camp is such a major, big festival. So oh, I've, I've attended 12 of the past 13, and, and that was so special to me. It's It was it was very special for you guys to be able to have that surprise with Mo, you guys being one of my favorite bands. Right, but just to have them consider us to do something like that and kind of ask us to step in, a lot, you know, not to mention doing along with a legendary jam band that's Mo. How did they approach you with that? Like, how did that come about? You know, from what I remember, there was just a situation where I don't remember exactly if a, I think a band had a, just some sort of logistical issue. I right. Know what band it, was. it was, you know, it was a big, big uh, headlining band, not, you know, one of the big headliner bands. And, uh, I remember. They were kind of trying to figure out, you know, what they could do. You know, <laughs> Mo's always, you know, they're there all weekend and they love that festival. And we happened to also be playing that that day already and we're in right. the works of doing some uh, video content with Mo. So, you know, we were with them and it kind of just all conspired together and, you know, everyone was super down. We were very nervous and confused because it was about the <laughs> show that they told us about. It. So, man, we had a blast. Me and Vinny were switching off on drums. I was just dancing around playing a cowbell. Well, that was great. I mean, what, not to interrupt, but with you guys switching in and out with the band switches on stage, I know that Umphreys has done that with the Mo. And now when I was at summer camp seeing you guys do that, I was really blown away. I wasn't expecting that. And for those listeners that don't know out there, 
the band switched between in the middle of the song without missing a note in the song and it was just an amazing experience to watch a band switch like that thank you man yeah it was uh very surreal but it, it, was, it was really cool i mean and also just to kind of look out it's such a great amphitheater there Definitely. Now, moving on to the band's newest album, Presto. Um, congratulations on that, man. It's been the it's the fifth uh, studio album that Pigeons has released on January fourteenth. Um, the album's been out thirty five days, and you, as you know, this past Friday it hit the number one spot on Relix's Jam Band album radio chart. So, congratulations on that, Alex. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, we're super happy, super proud of this album. Now, you know, every album you pour pour your uh, hard work and heart and soul into. But um, we think, you know, we are really able to use our kind of past experiences of being in the studio. To, we really think we are able to hone in on something, you know, very that works as a whole as a great album. So appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, what was it like for you when you found out that it was number one on Relix? Like, what what, what kind of feelings did that have for you? Man, we, uh, it's exciting, you know. Like, you know, obviously you don't let anything go to your head. It's more of just like... I try to view those things as uh, almost more fuel to just keep pushing harder. It's kind of what you got to do. You know, you never sure. want to say, oh, well, we got the number one spot. That's cool. <laughs> it's, you know, it's more like, all right, that means, you know, we got to keep pushing even harder. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's cool. It's great. It, it's it's interesting, you know. It's nothing you want to gloat about. But it is fun to see all those other bands on it and some great bands that you really look up to, like the Marcus King Man. Yeah, that's a very humble, that's a very nice and a very humble outlook to have on it. Yeah, um, I mean, you have to, I think, you know, especially at this level, you know, it's not, you know, we're, we're doing our best to keep keep this thing going, but, you know, we're not the Rolling Stones. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just jump ahead, you know, you gotta just take those things that, yeah, yeah, you gotta be proud of it, but also use it as Sure. It's just a feather in your cap, so to speak. Yeah. Now, I know there's a, a few classic Pigeon songs on that album, such as uh, King Kong, we have Skip, Skip Jack, one of my personal favorites, High is Five, which, you know, originally was called Highest Five with an E-S-T. <laughs> but um, now, what, what goes into the songs you pick for a particular album, and what, why some songs are left off that are left off the album that are in the catalog? What goes into figuring out what songs are on that album? Right, that's a good question, because, you know, a lot, a lot of times with jam bands, you'll see it with, you know, you'll see it with, uh, you know, back in the day with Umphreys, too. They used to have, before on their studio albums, they had so many songs that were just, you know, never on studio albums. Mm-hmm. They had such a catalog. And we were kind of the same way where there's, there was a few studio albums where there was always some big, you know, live popular songs that were kind of, you know, eventually going to get on an album. And it was just, you know... It was always kind of a mixture of kind of some newer songs mixed with some kind of classics being brought back um, that we finally wanted to get on on a record. But um, you know, this this album uh, I think was a little more unique because there were some songs that had been around for you know a, a bit, right? Um, songs that we were still really shaping. And other than that, I think there's a lot of you know they may not seem new now, but especially at the time we recorded them, you know, songs like. Havana and King Kong and, you know, Sail On and Overrun, mm-hmm. you know, those are still relative, relatively new, and that's kind of why I, uh, I you know, we, we really loved this album, because it was kind of our first, I feel like our first album that was mostly, like, kind of, you know, not totally, like, expected tunes, you know, in the past, you could always assume that we would probably get, you know, Poseidon or a big right. one on, the, on an album, but... I feel like this track listing is very like works together as a whole album and uh, rather than just a collection of songs. And I couldn't agree. That's a great way to put it. Um, even with Yo Soy Fiesta, that that song has evolved over times. Even with uh, Greg adding a whole nother verse within it, I believe after the holiday show is correct. Right, right. And I think that was also to uh, prepare for the album, just so we didn't, you know, he didn't want us to sing the same verse. Twice. Right, right. Yeah. But that that's one of my that's a fan favorite song. It has a tendency to kick up a dance party to the next gear. Um and that's a song that includes your very fun backing vocals, Gator. Um to be honest, how much how much did you enjoy just being able to belt out and really let loose on vocals during that song during shows? Well, it's funny, yeah. So if you listen to the album you'll hear a crazy <laughs> thing. That was me uh, It makes me laugh every time. That was my first take, by the way. I will 
I will go out about that. Anyway, <laughs> there you go. But, uh, I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, it's, it's funny because the band will allow me to, you know, use my voice a different kind of funny parts and typically in the past if i've ever had like a feature vocal line it usually stems from me just being really goofy and practicing mm-hmm. and just starting like singing a song like i, I sing white rabbit by uh you know jefferson <laughs> which, which just because like i was like joking at a rehearsal and just started singing it at the top of my lungs and they're like oh, all right we're doing it that's and, great know, we did a metallic song just because i was running around singing like james hetfield and they're like oh shit we're gonna do that <laughs> But nonetheless, that was another one where we were in practice rehearsing that Yo Soy Fiesta, and there was just that big build at the end, and I was just must have had a weird day because I just grabbed the mic and just started hilariously laughing and screaming. <laughs> they, 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 they all loved it immediately. They were like, we love this song, but that's our favorite part already. Oh, yeah, it, no, without a doubt. Now, you kind of teed me up for my next question pretty well. Um, do you have any other uh, great stories you could share from the studio that that you that you have memories of from recording Presto? Oh, man, great studio. Um, you know, it's funny because I'm trying to Not to put you on the spot, but... <laughs> one kind of funny thing is when we were prepping for the album um, there was like one song we were pretty stoked about working on and we focused so hard on like we had such hard focus on certain days working on certain songs that we finished the record and not even really in a bad way but we totally like forgot to record one of the songs that we were just <laughs> <on the record. laughs> like afterwards we were like so stoked but like it didn't bring us down at all we were just like all right like, Oh, that's great. Sounds good. We'll have a follow up question for the next interview. I love it. Now let's let's switch gears just a little bit. Um, it's been a wonderful year for pigeons. We've talked about um, before you've had sellouts, which have continued into this year. We've talked about you guys climbing the charts. But on a more personal level, um, you've had so many of your favorite artists, Alex, sit in with you guys on stage. You've had Jake Sinegar from Umphreys finally sit in with you in Montana. Um, you've had the Twidgen Dwellers set with Twidgens, Pigeons, and uh, Kitchen Dwellers. Um, you've had the Summer Camp set with, um, with Here Come the Mummies and Taz also sitting in. What has been your personal favorite sit-in that you've had so far as an artist? Oh, man, that's a great question. I mean, as personal, as much as you and I talk music, I got to know. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to be completely honest, I got to say that Jake was the best, just because you know me. Yep. And, you jump for you. and that, you know, that was more personal, you know, you, you grow up idolizing a guitarist, and, or, uh, and then, you know, not only because <laughs> he can play with one hand too, and he absolutely crushed it. He, it even wrote, he even wrote new parts to the song that we gave him. And That's amazing. He just started playing this line that wasn't even in the song that was perfect, and we all just like turned at him at real cool. It's just like faced each other. And we're like, Whoa. <laughs> that is amazing. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Well, on a personal level, I'll, I'll give Jocko the, uh, the medal all day. But I mean, we're just so fortunate to be in a in a an environment where you know it's it's you know it's it becomes a pretty common thing to jam with the people that are you know musical heroes. You know. We have a good friend uh, who's kind of an Instagram star, a uh, guitarist named Tomo Vegeta, mm-hmm. and he's a professor at Berkeley, very well-known, established, you know, uh, guitarist, and, you know, even him, we've reached out to him, and he's played shows with us in, in Boston, and, and uh, you know, it's just, everyone's so open, and on one hand, it seems very stressful the last minute put together this thing that you want to make sound great, but, man, most of the time, everyone's so good, you just... It always it, it always seems to work in the end. Right, you know, there might be some, some things that the band hears on stage that, like, might be a little funny or different, but, like, as far as just, like, the jam and everything, you know, you just go with it. The vast majority of the time, it works really well. For, most definitely. Now, yeah. you, you know the Midwest loves you guys, uh, especially those wonderful flockers in the Facebook group, the Indie Flock Fam. Want to give a shout-out to those guys. But, um... 
You know, the band's even addressed Indianapolis as a place that feels like a home away from home. And there's such a strong following for pigeons in the Midwest and in Indianapolis specifically. Why do you why do you think that is, Alex? You know, I agree. Um, it's interesting, you know, because, you know, you could kind of picture or kind of calculate why certain uh, regions might be good for us. You know, we're East Coast guys, so obviously the East Coast is good. But, you know, you you know, when you're in a jam, jam band, you know, Colorado, typically mm-hmm. love that. So there's kind of places that make sense um, for doing well. But I don't Midwest know, is a little different. It doesn't fit that typical scenario. That's, that's what I'm saying. And I, I you know, I, I don't even, I don't even know if I could pinpoint it or, or maybe there was, you know, one show that kind of just pushed forward. But it, I mean, we've, one big thing is we've played a lot of the venues in those towns too, you know, starting up in Indy and Chicago, you know, we played the tonic room in, uh, in Chicago. Oh, I was just going to. I don't even think I fit all my symbols. <laughs> no, you really can't. It's a, such a small stage. No, you bet. You guys played the Tonic Room. You played the Beat Kitchen, the Bottom Lounge. You've opened for Umphreys at Northerly, um, which that was a dream come tr- dream come true for me. Seeing you guys open for Umphreys, my two favorites. But you sold out the Concord last time, and now you're gonna uh, headline the historic Riviera Theater. How does that make you feel, and what does that mean for the band for this visit to Chicago? You know, especially, you know, going back, I always go back to Humphreys, but, you know, I'm such a big fan. Likewise, uh, we all are. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, right. You grew up, you know, you got the DVDs of them playing the Riviera on New Year's and stuff, and uh, I don't know. I see all these bands that kind of go through there, and you hear all the hype, and that's just kind of one of those bucket listers we're kind of getting to, and uh, it, it's so fun for us to kind of see that progression and be able to be a part of kind of growing into a new venue because we love all the venues too and sometimes you know you don't want to leave and then you get to the new place <laughs> and you're like oh crap this is awesome right so that's Well, we're excited to have you, Alex. Um, I really want to thank you for taking the time out of your evening to speak with us. Um, we're looking forward to having you and Goose in town and playing the Riviera this Saturday, March 7th. Um, check out their new album, Presto, on Spotify. And again, Gator, thanks so much for taking the time out before your show tonight in Colorado. Wizard, absolutely, man. Anything for you, brother. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, good to talk to you again. You have a good one, and we'll talk next year. Thanks, Alex. We look forward to seeing you next weekend. Uh, thank you guys. Bye now. Bye.